good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the State Department. And if I may have your attention for just a moment, please. Isn't this such a beautiful center? It is incredible. Often I walk through this center on my way into work and it's uh, pretty sparsely populated, so it's wonderful to see so many people in here this afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to extend a special welcome to our many distinguished guests, including the Diplomatic Corps and those from the great state of Minnesota. Where are all the Minnesotans here? Raise your hand if you're from Minnesota. You're from Minnesota, you're from Minnesota, you're from Minnesota. My husband's from Minnesota. We have a lot of great folks there. Do you all know how nice Minnesotans are? You've heard it, you've heard Minnesota nice. Let me tell you how nice these folks are. I would go running sometimes in Minnesota with my husband in the middle of winter, January, February, and we'd be on along for a run and it's maybe 15 degrees outside, Fahrenheit, and people would smile and they would say hello at you. In the middle of winter while you're running, so uh, we hope that you will consider Minnesota. We are big fans of it, certainly here at uh, the State Department. I would like to acknowledge the U.S. Diplomacy Center for allowing us to use the space today. It is a beautiful pavilion. It was completed last January and funded with private donations as part of a private-public partnership. It will be home to the first museum and educational center telling the story of U.S. diplomacy and also Americans' diplomats. We're here today to highlight the strong national support enjoyed by Minnesota USA bid to host Expo 2023 and to inspire member states of the Bureau of International Expositions to vote for the U.S. bid on November the 15th. Please mark your calendars. We would love your vote. Thank you. The Minnesota USA project is a private-public partnership that started more than two years ago and is a part of our global campaign to bring a World's Fair back to the United States. We would love to see that. I would like to thank the Office of the Undersecretary for Public Affairs and Public Diplomacy for coordinating the State Department's efforts and putting today's event together. I know they've been hard at work with this. An initiative of this magnitude requires a true champion to advocate on its behalf. Our Deputy Secretary of State, John Sullivan, is here and he has embraced this task and is working tirelessly to mobilize not only the department, but the entire U.S. government in support of the Minnesota USA bid. Deputy Secretary Sullivan is a native of Boston with decades of experience in both private legal practice and public service, including positions at the Defense Department and also Commerce Department. His ties to diplomacy and the State Department started long before he was sworn in as Deputy Secretary. His uncle served as a Foreign Service Officer for more than 30 years, and we all know how important our Foreign Service Officers are to the work that we do here every day. As Deputy Secretary of State, he serves as Principal Advisor to Secretary Tillerson, providing guidance and first-hand assistance to the Secretary in the formulation of conduct of U.S. foreign policy. We're honored that he is with us here today and that he is such a strong advocate for Minnesota USA's bid to host Expo 2023. Please join me in welcoming Deputy Secretary of State John J. Sullivan, and he is a terrific guy if you've not had a chance to meet him. Sir, thank you. Thank you, Heather, for that, uh, that kind introduction. Uh, I have one qualification to Heather's remarks. I am from Boston and grew up as a, uh, a hockey player, a hockey coach, hockey fan. So I spent a lot of time both in my youth and then when I was coaching my children's youth hockey teams in Minnesota. Brainerd, Red Wing, Winona, Rochester. I've been all over the state, been in many of your hockey rinks. Uh, tournaments, uh, summer hockey camps, and Minnesotans, as, uh, as, as Heather said, are just the most wonderful, sweetest persons, except when they hop over the boards to take a shift in a hockey game, and then they're pretty nasty. Uh, so I can, I can speak from personal experience on that. But I'm delighted to see so many people here to support, uh, to support this bid and all of those who have played an instrumental role in the United States bid for Expo 2023. I want to recognize the Foreign Diplomatic Corps present this afternoon as uh, many of the uh, foreign ambassadors who are here. Thanks to all of you for being here and for standing behind this important cause. 
Four months ago, I met with many of you uh, at the department as one of my first public appearances as Deputy Secretary of State, at which time I spoke about the United States' initial efforts to bring the World's Fair uh, back here to our country. I'm thrilled to report that since that time, the U.S. proposal has advanced to the final round. Our teams have been very busy highlighting why the United States, and more particularly Minnesota, is the ideal location with the perfect theme for that state, health and wellness, to host the World's Fair or Expo in 2023. As Heather mentioned, the Expo is a public-private partnership, one that's driven by grassroots efforts of the Minnesota World's Fair Bid Committee under the dedicated leadership of the committee president and chief executive officer, Mark Ritchie. Thank you, Mark, for all your work. Many of you know Mark, who is the former Minnesota Secretary of State, and in a moment, he'll provide us with the latest update on the bid, including details on the recent announcement of the proposed Expo site in Minnesota. Before Mark comes up here, uh, uh, I'd like to highlight the impressive work done thus far to effectively mobilize international support for this important commercial and diplomatic initiative. I want to thank our terrific Undersecretary for Political Affairs, Tom Shannon, who himself is a Minnesota native, uh, and his colleagues from the regional bureaus present here today for their diplomatic engagement in support of the Expo. Many have moved mountains to get us here to this point. In May, Congress passed legislation by unanimous consent authorizing the United States to rejoin the Bureau of International Expositions, or BIE, which is the Paris-based organization that governs participation in the World's Fair. Secretary Tillerson then signed the treaty accession documents that were deposited in Paris. Thank you to the Minnesota congressional delegation, as well as the leaders of the House Foreign Affairs and Senate Foreign Relations Committee for getting this legislation passed. You'll hear later in the program from two members of the Minnesota delegation that are with us today, U.S. Senator Amy Klobuchar and U.S. Representative Tom Emmer. Thanks to all of you for your help in getting us to where we are today. In June, the Bureau of International Expositions General Assembly voted to advance the U.S. bid to the final round that will be held in Paris on November 15th. Earlier this month, the United States once again became a voting member of the Bureau of International Expositions, and I look forward personally to traveling to Paris next month to cast the U.S. vote in support of this expo, the first in more than 15 years. My colleagues in the United States and around the world, including my former colleagues and friends from the Department of Commerce, have spoken to you and representatives in your capital about the Minnesota-USA bid. There is strong federal support for this public-private partnership in what would be the first World's Fair that take place in the United States in almost 40 years. BIE delegates have attended U.S.-hosted expo events in Paris, Brussels, and London, and many of your councils general in the United States have attended expo events in Minnesota and Chicago as well. I understand that several of you will join Deputy Chief of Protocol Cam Henderson in the Office of the Chief of Protocol's Experience America trip to Minnesota in the near future. For those ambassadors or chargés who have not yet signed up for the trip, please speak with Protocol today before you leave. It's not too late to join. We want you to experience Minnesota as we seek to bring the world there in 2023. We can all agree that there's something inspiring about a World's Fair a time when the world comes together to celebrate, explore, and discover the promises and opportunities of new technologies and partnerships. In this case, to focus on the increasingly important areas of health and wellness. Minnesota, home to some amazing medical technology companies in a region regularly ranked as one of the healthiest metropolitan regions in the country, is an ideal location for such an expo. The Smithsonian's American History Museum even included Minnesota's Medical, Al Medical Alley as one of the featured regions in their current exhibition, Places of Innovation. I still formally re fondly remember my experience as a child when my parents took me to the New York World's Fair in Queens in 1964. For those of you who have not been to the Queens Museum in New York City, there's a great World's Fair exhibit 
that captures that time and experience through a fantastic skill model of the city. It's really something to see. Uh, if you haven't been to a World's Fair yet, and I stre stress yet, I hope that we will have the opportunity to come together in Minnesota in 2023 for the Healthy People, Healthy Planet Expo. However, in order for that to happen, we need your support. And we need your vote on November 15 in Paris at the BIE General Assembly. So again, I thank you all for coming this afternoon and, appre and appreciate your ongoing efforts to make the 2023 Expo in Minnesota a reality. Thanks very much. Thank you, Deputy Secretary Sullivan. Your support and the support from your team has been what's made this Expo move throughout the world and has brought excitement and now real passion into our bid from Minnesota. My name is Mark Ritchie. I'm the former Secretary of State of Minnesota, and I have the privilege and the honor of being the volunteer leader for our effort, which we now think of as not just the Minnesota effort or the U.S. bid. We think of it as the world's opportunity to gather together to look at one of the most universal and most important issues of our time, health and wellness for all. Four months ago, some of us met here. We gathered. Deputy Secretary mentioned that in the Paris meeting, we were fortunate enough to win an important vote and to be into the finals. But many other things have occurred in that time. The site now, we've chosen the site. It's one of the most beautiful sites that has ever been for a World Expo. It's on the river, and it's where the Mississippi, Mississippi River and the Minnesota River come together. There's an 80-foot bluff in a beautiful place, and there's a trout stream if you happen to fish, but it's one of the most beautiful sites that there will ever have been an expo. We've also worked very closely with the World Health Organization and the United Nations to link our focus on health to the global goals on, social, on sustainable development. Some of you know SDG number three, Dr. Tedros, the new head of WHO, opened our symposium on this theme recently in Paris. We are working closely to make sure that we bring the people power of Expos directly into that 15-year campaign, the 2030 campaign. And our date of 2023 is exactly in the middle of that 15-year arc. And it's the opportunity for us to then stock take how we doing on those important goals, share our best practices, create the partnerships to make sure that we achieve those global goals by 2030. The other thing that's been important about these last few months is the excitement that has been building because of people's appreciation of the theme and of the U.S. reintegrating itself into the BIE and for the leadership on the idea that expos, the gathering of peoples from every nation, are the place where optimism and courageous visionary activity and accomplishments and dreams, all of these come together to remind us of the future, to remind us of the gifts we've received from those who've come before us and our responsibility to bring forth a new future, a new opportunity. We have seen in this last moment, in the last few moments of our campaign, there's only 20 days left, um, we have seen that there is a hunger throughout the planet for things that bring us together. We believe this Expo in Minnesota, Expo 2023, is one of those opportunities. We wouldn't be here today if many people had not given us their support in June. And I thank so many of you as ambassadors who contacted your colleagues in Paris or foreign ministry and urged them to support us. And I want to thank you again for that, but ask you to tonight or tomorrow or sometime in the next few days again to contact your foreign minister your colleagues in Paris to urge them to support, to vote for us for this opportunity. But we also wouldn't be here if some of our political leaders 
had not had the wisdom and courage and the really the persistence to wind legislation through Congress and through the President's office and to the State Department. You'll hear from two of the incredible leaders from our state of Minnesota, Congressman Emmer, Senator Klobuchar. But I want to say that while they were the critical forces to bringing this forward, all of our delegation and staff and so many people in the Commerce and State and so many citizens and business leaders and others have brought us to this day. I want to invite you to come in 2023, and it, yes, it's in the summer, people always ask that question, but I also want you to come before then so we can talk about how to make 2023 as fantastic, as optimistic, as energetic, and driving the future as we can. And so I want to show you just a little short video about Minnesota because I want to excite you to come visit next year or sooner but we want your help to make sure we have the opportunity, the right, to host the first World's Fair ever on health and wellness in 2023. Thank you, Your Excellencies, for coming tonight and honoring us with your presence. Please come to Minnesota and see us hopefully sooner rather than later. Thank you again. The planet reflects our belief that health and wellness are issues of universal importance and that the well-being of people and planet are deeply intertwined. As a candidate to host the world's first specialized expo on health and medicine, we work closely with governments, international organizations, companies, and civil society to bring the transformative power of expos to one of the world's most important sustainable development goals, wellness and well-being for all. We are closely aligned with the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development to help every nation reach their health-related goals, to share best practices, and to forge the partnerships needed to achieve these vital goals. Partnerships with all levels of government are crucial to our success. Visionary local leaders providing strong financial and logistical support. Unanimous consent in Congress to rejoin the BIE shows the strong legislative support at the national level. We will welcome every country to tell its own story on health and wellness, and we will ensure that all BIE member nations can fully participate in this historic event. National and international media coverage will bring world attention to the accomplishments and the aspirations of all. The Expo in 2023 will take place in the state of Minnesota, in America's heartland. Blessed with towering forest and fertile soil, Minnesotans have created vibrant and prosperous communities. Our state is endowed with abundant natural resources and a great physical beauty including the headwaters of both the Mississippi River and the North American Great Lakes. We are conscious of the value of these ecological treasures and of our responsibility to protect these for the well-being of the entire planet and future generations. The Expo will be located on the bluffs overlooking a beautiful river, adjacent to one of the most important urban wildlife refuges in America. And it includes miles of walking, cycling, and bird watching trails. Minnesota's combination of world-class education and prosperous businesses has attracted people from all over the world. In recent years, our region has welcomed a large number of new Minnesotans from Southeast Asia, East and West Africa, the Middle East, Eastern Europe, India, China, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Minnesotans believe strongly in scientific research and in sharing this knowledge through our colleges and universities. Professors and researchers in our region have been recognized with 25 Nobel Prizes in Medicine and Science and three Nobel Peace Prizes. As our population has grown, our economy has prospered. We are world leaders in health care, food production, higher education, clean technology, and advanced manufacturing. With more Fortune 500 firms per capita than anywhere outside New York City, Minnesota is proud to be home to many global leaders in healthcare and medicine, including 3M, Cargill, Ecolab, United Health Group, Medtronic, Boston Scientific, and the world's leading hospital, Mayo Clinic. 
We also believe that working together is the key to success within a community and between nations. This site is adjacent to the largest tourist destination in North America, the Mall of America. 40 million visitors come each year, many from overseas, and it will be an important contributor to our expected attendance of 12 million. This site is also very convenient, less than 10 minutes by public transportation from our highly rated international airport with easy connections to the world's major cities. Two large public transportation hubs, including light rail transit, connect the expo to the entire region. Near the expo, there are 10,000 hotel rooms and an additional 40,000 rooms are in the metropolitan area. Our robust hospitality industry makes Minnesota a favorite destination for large-scale events like Ryder Cup, the NFL Super Bowl, the National College Basketball Championships, and the X Games. Thousands of restaurants, theaters, concert halls, and other attractions are easily reached from this site along with thousands of short and long-term rental units and Airbnb options. President Ritchie, thank you so much for that wonderful video showing all the wonderful things that you can do in Minnesota. I should mention that uh, despite talk about Minnesota being very, very cold, what you saw there and the time of year that you would be there is summer. And it is truly the most beautiful time of year in Minnesota. So you will want to uh, join us hopefully for that. I would now like to welcome a member of the Minnesota congressional delegation. U.S. Representative Tom Emmer is here. He's from Minnesota's sixth con congressional district. And sir, you can certainly back me up on the beautiful weather in the summertime, right? It is. It is the time to come. I love winter, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think they'll like the summer. I think they'll love the summer. <laughs> I know they'll love the summer. Thank you very much. How about that Mark Ritchie? He talks about have, bringing energy in 2023. He brings energy everywhere he goes. Thank you, Mark, for everything that you do. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Deputy Secretary uh, Sullivan for hosting this event tonight. Uh, it's great to see representatives from over 70 BIE member states that are here today. Again, a special thanks to Mark Ritchie, uh, Chris Kelly, and the entire Expo 2023 coalition, as well as the entire team here at the State Department, especially Jim Corr, who I understand is heading up the department's International Exposition Unit, in addition to Taylor Bush and William Wolfe and Heather Nauer. Thank you very much for everything all of you are doing. Uh, lastly, uh, to my colleagues in the Minnesota delegation, and I was hoping that uh, Mark already told you, uh, uh, Mark Ritchie, that it was a team effort. It was everybody, but uh, I, I just wanted to call out my uh, colleague, uh, my uh, friend, uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar, and I don't know that she's here because without her, we got it through the House. Long story, we'll tell you some other time. Uh, without objection, but uh, we could not have done it without Senator Klobuchar's help on the other side. As everyone knows, the Bureau of International Expositions will make its decision in just a few days, on November 15th in Paris. It's great to hear, Deputy Secretary, that you're going to be there. Thank you. Uh, and it's great to once again see the United States competing on the world stage. I can think of no state that is better to host the first expo on American soil in almost 40 years than our home state of Minnesota. As you've already heard, Minnesota is home to 18 Fortune 500 companies, including Medtronic from 3M, that were in that, uh, that great video that you put up. And some of you who will be touring, uh, attending the upcoming Experience America trip, and I would encourage you, please, you have to see it to believe it. it uh, if you can imagine a state where we have six or seven months of cold and snow, which I'm going home to tonight, it's supposed to be snowing tonight. If you can imagine the people that built this state actually attracted the best and the brightest by developing some of the most wonderful companies, opportunities, and culture you would ever imagine. And yes, when it thaws out sometime in June, it is phenomenal. I'm proud to, to uh, represent a state whose people, economy, and ingenuity make it a perfect location to showcase that everything 
that the United States has to offer when it comes to making the world a better place. I want to thank everyone again for coming tonight, and I want to encourage all of you, please support Minnesota's bid to host the 2023 World Expo in Minnesota in November. Thank you. So thank you. I understand that uh, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar will be here shortly, if not just yet, so I hope you all have the opportunity uh, to meet her. I know she would like to speak with you about just how fantastic her home state is. This concludes our formal program. Please enjoy the reception and remember to vote for Minnesota on November the 15th in Paris. Hold on one second. And the senator is coming right our way. So I know she'd like to uh, chat with you for just a moment. So let me welcome her on up here. And I could just tell you more about Minnesota if you like. <laughs> so who is from the farthest country away? Who represents, I know we have a lot of ambassadors in the room. Who is from the country farthest from the United States? Anybody, what, you're being shy? Egypt, sir, you're from Egypt. Thank you so much. I know the vice president is traveling to Egypt in a couple months, and we look forward to that. Anybody else? You're from Guatemala. Wonderful, beautiful country. Well, thank you for coming as well. Uh, Senator Klobuchar is here, and I know she'd like to share a few words with you, and then we'd like you to enjoy the reception. Well, thank you, everyone. It is great to be here. I was actually over at the White House uh, on the opioid issue, and so it was uh, good to now see all of you. And I hear that, you know, I am half Slovenian and half Swiss. I just want to put that out there right now. So is there someone from Slovenia here? I heard a rumor that that would... There you are. Uh, well, as I have mentioned before, a lot of things have changed in Washington, but for me, um, one of the more traumatic things is that I was officially displaced as the most Slo uh, famous Slovenian-American by Melania Trump. Um, and as I noted uh, at the National Prayer Breakfast, with the president sitting right there, uh, that she was born an hour away from where my relatives are from um, in Slovenia, and every day I look at her, it's like looking in the mirror. So, I am very, very pleased to be here um, uh, with the Deputy Secretary of State. Uh, I know my friend uh, Congressman Emmer, who has been such an instrumental force in this. We work really well together across the aisle, which I think is going to be really important uh, for our Minnesota bid. And then Mark Ritchie, our former Secretary of State, uh, who uh, has uh, been just this driving force who would never give up. And as you all may have heard, we had to pass a law, which isn't that easy these days. Uh, we had to pass a law uh, to be able to bid on this. Uh, and Mark just believed somehow we were going to get it done, uh, and we did. So that was great. So one of my hats I wear is that I'm co-chair of the Senate Tourism Caucus with uh, Roy Blunt of Missouri, and we really like to get international visitors uh, in our country. We think it's very good for our diversity of our country and meeting people, uh, but we also know it's good for our economy as international visitors spend $4,000 a person whenever they come in. Maybe that's some of you, I don't know. Um, and we especially like when they come to our state. And I'm sure maybe Tom told you a little bit about our state. Uh, we're a place where, in the words of uh, Garrison Keeler, who used to have a radio show, the women are strong, uh, the men are good looking, and all the world expos will be above average. Um, we uh, love our state. Uh, we are the state of uh, over 10,000 lakes, over 11,000, actually. Uh, we like to boast that we have more uh, coastline in Minnesota, this is a true fact, than they have in California, Florida, and Hawaii combined. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to ask you where you would rather go in the winter, but you really have to understand that that's because of all these lakes that create all this coastline. Um, so we're really excited about this bid. Uh, we have 18 Fortune 500 companies in Minnesota. Uh, we brought the world everything from the pacemaker to the post-it note. If you ever use post-it notes, you'll think about our state. And we, of course, are the home of the Mayo Clinic and 
uh, University of Minnesota and have some really vibrant healthcare providers. So the theme of our bid is wellness and well-being for all, healthy people, healthy planet. And uh, we would like to highlight our state's thriving life science, medical device, and biotech industries, which include, of course, United Health, Medtronic, St. Jude, uh, in addition to Mayo. Um, and so we think this is a really important topic right now as you look at world health and all of the changes that must be made and trying to get people uh, in a better health situation as well as harnessing that innovation and research not only in the U.S. but in so many countries around the world that don't have access to that uh, right now. And I have seen Minnesota companies in Africa and other places uh, where they've worked to really improve people's health and we want to send that message abroad. Uh, in his joint address to Congress earlier this year, the President highlighted the World's Fair uh, hosted by the United States in 1876. Now, maybe most people are going, whatever, but Emma and I were going, this is really good, because maybe we could get this bill passed. Um, but he mentioned the innovations on display, Alexander Graham Bell's telephone, Remington's typewriter, Thomas Edison's automatic telegraph, and he asked us to imagine the wonders we would display today. Well, in Minnesota, we don't have to imagine them because we have them with micro robots, personalized hearing aids linked to your smartphone, heart valves implanted in, through an incision in your leg. And so with the help of Minnesota's bid committee, we will be able to share them with the world at Expo 2023. So thank you so much for having me and I hope we have some fatitsa. That's a Slovenian thing. We probably don't. There was a very, I will end with this rather hilarious Slovenian story because I'm just really focused on Slovenia today. But um, uh, when the president and the first lady went to meet with the pope, uh, the pope who understands our homeland actually said, oh, you must be feeding him patizza. <laughs> the journalists there were in Italy, so what do you think they thought he said? Pizza. So they reported pizza, the 0.00001% of the world's population that our Slovenian got really, really mad. And they, uh, they, they put it out there and pretty soon they reported it correctly that it was pizza, but they spelled it like pizza. Then I had to issue a correction and the New York Times had to redact, redact what they had said. That is a true Slovenian story and a great international story. Thank you, everyone. And I love to meet everyone when I get around. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Thanks to our Deputy Secretary, John Sullivan, and everyone for joining us. Have a great time.